Okay guys, welcome to our sixth programming tutorial in our beginning programming tutorial series. In this tutorial, we're going to go over functions, um, which are also known as methods. <clears throat> now it's important up to this point that you've sort of mastered every other concept that we've covered in the previous tutorial. So you need to make sure you know, you're on top of that um, before going forward with this one. So as I said, functions are the same as methods. In some programming languages, they're called methods. In others, they're called functions. And that's the reason why I've put both of them up there. But essentially, they're just the same thing. <clears throat> so, to put this into context, to give you an idea of actually what, what a function does, or actually what a method, functional method is, if we had a program like this. So, this is my program. And say I'm writing my code here. So, <clears throat> just, I'm writing my code, I'm writing my code, I'm writing my code. I would say that this section here, right, section here, is a function. And what does this section, a part of section of my program do? It performs some task. So a function is a section in our program that performs some task. A method is a section in our program that performs some task. Okay, that's all it is. So it's part of our program, so that part does some sort of task. Now to put this into context, I'm going to give you a real life example. Say for example, I wanted a function that whatever number I give it, so whatever number I give this function, so I'm going to I'm going to call my function um, multiply. Okay, so it gives you an idea of what I want to do. So I, whatever number I give this function multiply, I want it to return ten times that number. So for example, this is going to be my, the name of my function multiply by ten, and x is going to be the number I give it. I'm going to give this function a, a number. Okay, I'm gonna give it x, but what I want it, I want, I want it to do is I want it to say, okay, you've given me x, you've said that you want to multiply by ten. Okay, we need to actually multiply by ten because this is just a name, that's a parameter, that's what we're going to give it. We need to say return. So we need to give back. Okay, we need to give back. Uh, here we gave, here we gave in, in in this section we need to give back. So return. What do you think, x? times 10. It's as simple as that. So we wanted a function that would multiply the number that I gave by 10. So obviously to make sh make our code readable we, we made the name multiply by 10. This x is going to be the number that I give it. x we don't know what x is at the moment and rightly so because in our program we might want to use this function with many different numbers. x can be 5, x can be 6, x can be 7 but we'll show, we'll demonstrate that later on. Okay, so multiply by 10. Um, what, do you want, what do you want me to multiply by 10? x. Okay, so how do you actually multiply that by 10? Well, simply return, so give back the number, give back what number? x times 10. Okay, now, okay, this is my function at the moment. Now, this is part of, this is part of my program. Now, if you think about it, I haven't used this function. I say this is all my program, that this is my code. <clears throat> so that's part of my code at the bottom there. Now the thing is, I haven't used this um, function yet. So when I run this program, nothing would happen. Because I haven't actually called, they call, uh, this is how it, uh, in programming it's calling the function. So in other words, using the function. But we'll say call um, from this point forward. So I haven't called the function yet. <clears throat> and to call the function, all I have to do very simply is multiply so I type the name of the function by 10 and then this is where the key um, part is x at the moment um, well I have to give the number that I want to multiply by 10 which is going to be um, I'll say anything 9 okay and that's it I've called the function so to show what will happen okay so the comp so the program will say okay or the compiler will look and say okay I've got this name so I'm going to match it with this one here. Okay, I've got this 9. I'm going to match it with x. So now, on the side, if I just write x is going to be equal to 9, right, at the moment. So that's going to be equal to 9 um, times 10. And then we're going to return that. That's going to, so it's going to return 9 to I can also call this function again. I can say, so if I just rub this out, so I can say multiply... 10, I can call 6, and it does the same thing, it will make x equal to 6 in that instance, right, 
So in that instance, it'll make x equal to 6. In this instance, it'll make x equal to 9. And the thing is, I can keep calling the same function and again and again and again with different parameters or a different number. Um, and that's very good because it saves our um, from it saves us from repeating ourselves instead of always writing out you know nine times ten six times ten it can become tedious. Sometimes you just want to be able to you know call on the function. The function is going to do the same thing every time, but you know you give it different values. You, I gave it nine. I gave it six here. You know it will always do, it will do uh, it will perform a different calculation and give you what you want. <coughs> now one thing you notice is if you think about it. Um, this program still won't do anything. If I run this program, it won't do nothing. When I say it won't do nothing, it won't give me any output. And I'll give you a second to think about why. Because we've got the function down here on the bottom. We've got my two functions being called. But, um, yeah, we've got them being called, but nothing else happens. It's because it's because we're not printing out. We're not printing anything out to the user. Yes, we've we've said okay, multiply by ten, multiply nine, oh, and we gave it the parameter nine. So nine is going to be multiplied by ten. But where did we say that we're going to print the answer to that? We we didn't say that anyway. So we need to make sure we add a print there, print, and we do the same print. And then what will that? So that line will print out ninety, and that line will print out sixty. Okay, so when we run the, the program, which I just, you know, got, um, which I just deleted, so you have a command line, <coughs> a command line, and when the program runs, it will print out 90, and it will print out 60. Um, so it's important that you understand what makes up a function, so I'm just going to write, <coughs> so what we have, we have the function name, And then it's gonna, and then inside the brackets we're gonna take a parameter. Now you know what? As we, this can be more than one. We can have two parameters, and I'll show you how. We can say, okay, um, you can have parameter. You can have as many parameters, and you can have parameter one, param parameter, parameter one, parameter two. You can have as many as you want. And what would we do? We could do so anything. We could do return. Um, parameter 1 times parameter 2 you know we could do something like that you know you can take as many parameters as you want okay alright so um, again function the name of the function the parameter or parameters and then the body we're going to have to return something. Remember, the return is very key. We have to return something. So we do something with the parameter and we return it. So I'm just going to, you know, a pointless function that would just return the parameter that you gave. Now, it's important to understand is that this is very, very high level. Um, very high level. Um, you know, there's at real life functions in like Java or C++ or C Sharp are completely different to this. The same concept applies. You still have the function name and the parameters, but you have many more things before the um, before the function name. You would have public, static, void, and all of those things. Um, if you haven't heard of them, don't worry. You don't need to worry about them. Only when it comes to learning a specific language, then you will need to know. But the main idea is you understand. At this, uh, what you need to know by the uh, you know at this point is what a function is, how a function works. You know, if I asked you what parameter is. If I ask you what your fun a function name is, if I ask you why you need to return a value, um, and if I asked you how would I call a function, what what you need to do to answer all those questions, and hopefully I've covered all of that. So, um, okay, thanks for watching. If you have any comments, feedback, or anything like that, um, please do feel free to comment. Subscribe to the YouTube channel because I will keep uh, continue to upload videos. Um, the tour just, the series is coming to an end. Once the series comes to an end, I want to start teaching. Um, I think I haven't decided yet, but it will probably be a scripting language, or um, I might get straight into Java. But we'll see until then. All right. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day. Bye bye.